Safeguarding Vulnerable Adults Safeguarding adults is everyone's business, but how does it apply to you specifically as a volunteer? People often don't expect adults to be as at risk from abuse as children. This is why we all have a responsibility to look out for one another, particularly those who are not as able to look out for themselves. If you volunteer with vulnerable adults, this training is essential to helping you recognise abuse and report your concerns confidently. Student Hub's volunteers are expected to complete this training by watching this video and then taking a compulsory safeguarding quiz to check their understanding. If you have any unanswered questions at the end of this video, please contact your safeguarding lead or refer to the Vulnerable Adults Safeguarding Policy. Details are on the Student Hub's website. Course Aims Following a brief introduction, this course is broken into four key sections. These are the four R's of safeguarding. Recognise, Respond, Report and Record. These are actions that you should feel confident in taking following this training. The course will outline types of abuse and warning signs, explore appropriate responses to a disclosure, enable confident reporting of a safeguarding concern and emphasise your personal commitment to recording any safeguarding issues. Note, this training contains descriptions of abuse that you may find distressing. This is a natural reaction as abuse is not a pleasant subject. If you have been affected by abuse or would like further advice on making a safeguarding report, please get in touch with your local Safeguarding Adults Board. Their details can be found through a quick Google search. Alternatively, there are various free phone helplines that offer more specific advice regarding issues such as domestic violence or elder abuse. Safeguarding is everyone's responsibility. It is important to remember you are part of a wide network of support services for a vulnerable person. No one person can have a complete view of a vulnerable adult's circumstances. It is therefore your responsibility to share any information or concerns you have. It may seem a little daunting to be expected to deal with an incident, but it is important that everyone in society plays their part so that we can safeguard vulnerable adults together. What is safeguarding? Safeguarding adults involves protecting an adult's rights to live in safety, free from abuse and neglect. Safeguarding also includes ensuring quality of life dignity, respect and choice. Many adults can achieve this independently, yet other more vulnerable people require a helping hand. Who are vulnerable adults? Some adults are more vulnerable than others. This can be due to a range of reasons, including isolation, illness, memory problems, turbulent relationships, mental health, disability, age, mental capacity or difficulty communicating. Section 1 of this training. Recognise. This first section will turn your attention towards the risks that vulnerable adults face. Why do you think vulnerable adults are more at risk from abuse than others? and what constitutes abuse. By the end of this section, you will be able to recognise different forms of abuse and will be aware of their warning signs. Now it's over to you for question time. Please take a couple of moments to consider the correct answer to the following question before we move to the next slide. Which forms of abuse are most commonly experienced by vulnerable adults? A. Institutional and financial abuse B. Neglect and physical abuse C. 
emotional and psychological abuse, or D, sexual abuse and discrimination. Please select one option. Did you get the answer right? Neglect and physical abuse are the most common forms. A report by the Health and Social Care Information Centre showed that 30% of reported cases were allegations of neglect and acts of omission. 27% of the cases were allegations of physical abuse. Abuse can take various forms and vigilance is important to recognising potential warning signs. Let us first look at four of the most commonly recognised forms of abuse. Firstly, neglect. Neglect can include withholding food, drink, medication, heating or lighting. It can be a denial of visitors or a failure to provide access to health, social or educational services. It can also include self-neglect. Warning signs are weight loss, bed sores, unkempt appearance, soiled clothing, reduced communication skills, complaints of pain or discomfort, worsening health conditions or dirty, unsafe surroundings. The second most common form of abuse is physical abuse. Physical abuse can include hitting, pushing, shaking, kicking, nipping, grabbing, pulling hair, rough handling, misuse of medication, force feeding, or inappropriate use of restraint. Warning signs can include obvious indicators such as unexplained injuries or less obvious signs such as an unwillingness to seek medical care or changes in the adult's behaviour. Other forms of abuse include psychological or emotional and sexual abuse. Psychological or emotional abuse can include name calling, threats of harm, abandonment and ignoring, deprivation of contact, humiliation, blaming, treating someone like a child, threats, intimidation and coercion. Warning signs include high blood pressure, low self-esteem, lack of confidence, depression or withdrawal and a lack of trust in others. An adult may cower in the presence of the abuser. Sexual abuse can include being forced to watch pornography or to be sexually active for someone else's benefit. It also includes rape or sexual assault. Potential warning signs include pain, irritation or bleeding in intimate areas, difficulty walking or sitting, torn, stained or bloody underclothing, sexually transmitted infections or pregnancy. These examples are by no means a definitive list. Therefore, you must trust your instincts. If something bothers you, don't ignore it. Ask yourself why and consider whether there may be an underlying problem which needs to be brought to light. Let us now look at a case study. Please pay careful attention as you will be asked to recognise the form of abuse on a following slide. Four care workers at Hillcroft Nursing Home in Lancaster were sentenced for abusing elderly residents with dementia. Vulnerable victims were pelted with bean bags, mocked and bullied for staff members' amusement. Due to their condition, it was expected the residents would not remember this humiliation and ill treatment. Warning, never assume that a vulnerable adult will tell you when something is wrong. If you have any cause for concern, it is your duty to report. Question time. Which two forms of abuse were the residents at Hillcroft subjected to? Please take a couple of moments to choose the two correct options before moving to the next slide. A. Psychological or emotional abuse. B. Neglect. C. Physical abuse. D. Sexual abuse.
Did you get the answer right? The residents at Hillcroft were subject to psychological or emotional abuse and physical abuse. Residents were not only physically abused, they were denied any dignity and subject to bullying from the staff who were supposed to be looking after them. Although it may be difficult to consider these warning signs in detail, it is important that to complete this section, we look at three further forms of abuse, which are less commonly recognised, yet equally as dangerous. Firstly, financial abuse. Financial abuse can include withholding money or possessions, theft, fraud, scamming, or borrowing money and not repaying it. Within families, this can include pressure with wills, deeds, or inheritance. Warning signs include unexplained inability to pay for bills or an inability to account for spending, withdrawal of large sums of money, worrying about money or money or possessions going missing. Next, discrimination. Discrimination includes harassment or maltreatment because of a person's race, gender, disability, age, faith, culture or sexual orientation. Examples are slurs, bullying, threats or unequal care. Warning signs include the person being used as a scapegoat, denial of access to services, being treated differently to other service users, being subject to discriminatory descriptions or jokes, or lack of respect for religious faiths. Lastly, institutional abuse. Institutional abuse includes poor practice, policies or procedures within a residential home, hospital or daycare centre. Routines may be insensitive or fail to take into account the unique needs of each person. The needs of the staff may be prioritised above the service users and there may be use of restraint or sensory deprivation, for example failure to provide hearing aids. Warning signs include lack of flexibility in the bedtime or waking routine, adults being left on the toilet or commode for long periods of time, inappropriate care of possessions or living area, a lack of clothes and possessions, inappropriate use of medical procedures, or people being spoken to or referred to disrespectfully. To wrap up this section, let us look at another case study. Olive Cook, aged 92, committed suicide following the overwhelming pressure of phone calls and letters requesting charity donations. Mrs Cook was sent 180 letters a month and had 27 direct debits going to different charities. Question time. Which two forms of abuse was Olive Cook subjected to? What warning signs could have been spotted? Please take a moment to consider these questions. Let's look at the answers together. It could be said that Olive Cook was subjected to financial abuse and psychological abuse. Warning signs that could have been spotted include excessive spam mail and calls, inability to pay bills and worrying about money. Section 2. Respond. This section will enable you to respond appropriately when warning signs are present. It will also teach you to respond sensitively to a disclosure. How concerns are raised. First, let us define what exactly a disclosure is. A disclosure is when someone tells you directly they are being abused. As this is not always the case, your concerns may also be raised when 
you witness something firsthand, for example, suspicious bruising. Another professional, relative, or friend of the adult tells you something. Or, you overhear someone else voicing concerns. Responding to a disclosure. When responding to a disclosure, there are several things you can do. Firstly, ensure immediate safety. If necessary, contact emergency services, such as the ambulance or police. Stay calm. Listen carefully and maintain eye contact. Reassure the adult they did the right thing to tell you. Explain your concerns to the adult. Request their consent to make a report. Report to the Student Hub's safeguard lead. Lastly, write down what you have seen or heard soon afterwards. It is important to be aware that your own emotional responses to abuse may affect how you feel about reporting a concern. You may feel shock, disgust or anger. You may feel disbelief, embarrassment or even interest. This is perfectly normal, but you must not express these emotions as they may deter a vulnerable adult from disclosing any further information. Try to stay neutral and focus on what they are saying. Do not investigate with probing questions or prompt responses. Let someone tell you what they are comfortable with. Don't jump to conclusions, show suspicion or use another person. Only report what you have been told, otherwise you could damage the case later on. Don't promise to keep secrets. And finally, never confront the abuser as you may put yourself or the vulnerable adult in further danger. Question time. Listen to the following responses to a disclosure and choose the three that are most appropriate to use. Did you provoke the abuser? Thanks for telling me, you're not alone. Don't worry, we can keep this our secret. Are you in any immediate danger? I will need to report this for your safety. Is that okay? We are going to make them pay for this. The following are appropriate responses to someone who has made a disclosure. Thanks for telling me. You're not alone. Are you in any immediate danger? I will need to report this for your safety. Is that okay? Section 3. Report. Do not wait until you are sure. Just report what you have seen or heard that concerns you. This section will teach you to report your concerns confidently and what information to include. Question time. Which of the following are your responsibilities? A. To confirm the type of abuse. B. To be familiar with the vulnerable adult safeguarding policy. C. To find out the contact information of Student Hub Safeguarding Lead. D. To decide what kind of help the vulnerable adult needs. E. To report your concerns as soon as they come to your attention. Please take a couple of moments to select the three most appropriate options. Are you aware of your responsibilities? They are to be familiar with the Vulnerable Adult Safeguarding Policy, to find out the contact information of Student Hub's Safeguarding Lead, to report your concerns as soon as they come to your attention. Although it is important to be aware of different forms of abuse, 
you are not an expert and will never be expected to make a final decision on help needed. So long as you are aware of warning signs and ready to report to the safeguarding lead, they will bring matters to the attention of adult social services. How to report concern. Download a cause for concern form from the safeguarding website or ask your project coordinator or hub staff for a copy as soon as possible. Complete the form, sign and date it. Give the completed form to the project coordinator or hub staff within 24 hours. If you have any queries regarding a safeguarding issue, you can always contact the Student Hub Safeguarding Lead directly. This slide displays the initial section of Student Hub's Cause for Concern and Disclosure form. It will ask you to provide various details. Let us now consider what would be appropriate information to include. Question time. Please take a couple of moments to choose the three correct options before moving to the next slide. Which of the following should you include on a cause for concern form? A. Your name and the project you volunteer on. B. The name of the alleged abuser and their relationship to the adult. C. The emotions you feel towards the abuser. D. Your opinion on the abuser's motivations. E. Your concern and action taken. Select three options now. Let us look at the answers. Your name and the project you volunteer on should be included on a cause for concern form. You should also include the name of the alleged abuser and their relationship to the adult, as well as details of your concern and action taken. It is also useful to include the date, time and location of the disclosure or observation. Known details of the vulnerable adult, for example their age or address. Observations to support your cause for concern. Try to distinguish facts from opinion. Your report does not need to be emotive. The actions and words will speak for themselves and can be cross-referenced with any observations made by others. What happens next? The safeguarding lead will pass the report to adult social care. Adult social care will decide what action is necessary within 24 hours. You will be contacted by social services should they wish to investigate further. Warning, the more time passes, the hazier your memory of the report will become. It is therefore your responsibility to keep a private copy of details in case you need to recall them later. This brings us to our final section, record. It is important to document your report for future use and to keep a detailed copy on file with student hubs. Tips for recording. Record the information you have shared as soon after reporting your concern as possible. Use exact detail to ensure information can be accurately called if necessary. Write a clear and factual account, including what happened and how you responded. Opinions are not necessary. Record the exact words where possible. To conclude this vulnerable adult safeguarding training, please take these three action points. Following the presentation, complete the Student Hub Safeguarding Quiz. Note the contact details of the Student Hub Safeguarding Lead, found on the Safeguarding webpage. Contact the Safeguarding Lead if you have any further questions. If you would like to read any further information on vulnerable adult safeguarding, please see the following list of resources. Thank you for your time and attention.